So I'm about to meet Mick Hughes, who's a musician on the Sunshine Coast. We know him because Roaring Lion are going to play at his ska reggae festival, but I've never met him before. I've also never recorded a podcast before. Zoom recording is working. Okay, here we go. Hey, how are you? There we go. We yeah, got Yeah, great. <laughs> All right. So I'm recording this, hopefully, and, uh, you know, just so you know, all right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Yes. So um, I started, you know, we're only getting connected because you've invited Raw in line to play at the Scar Reggae Festival. Yeah, looking forward to it. It's going to be a great day. Um, hopefully, um, yeah, they've, they've all been good days so far. It's my, uh, I think it's the 17th, 17th day we've done over the last few years. Really? Mm. So, um, so I've got two that? lined up just before in September uh, with Subtribe from a um, great uh, young band from um, from Sydney. So, yeah, that'd oh, be nice. good, yeah. So right. that, that'd, be, that'd be really good. That'd be, that'd be great. So no, we're really looking forward to you guys. It's gonna be, gonna be great fun. I know, so tell me, um, you got a lot going. So yeah. you got ska reggae. Yes. Um, and then uh, I mean, there's an Irish band, there's called Britannia. Yeah. You Brit. Sucker for punishment. <laughs> yeah. Are you on the Sunshine Coast? I'm on the Sunshine Coast, yeah. It's not very sunny today, as you can see behind us. No. <laughs> I think I was I was a bit no. missold, I think. But um no, it was um yeah, I got the. Uh, I play in an Irish band as well. Uh, that's kind of where my family's from, from Ireland, and I, I lived there for quite a lot of my my um, younger years. And wow. I got a big Irish family, and um, yeah, so I grew up playing Irish music, really. So uh, yeah, we're, I'm lucky enough to be in a band. I started about must be 11, 12 years ago now, um, and we get to play. Yeah, we've we've got to play some fantastic venues, and um, we played most of the major festivals around Australia, and we get to go abroad a little bit, and we tour in France and Ireland and places like that. So yeah, it's great. We're off for the whole of whole of August. I'm off, so we're playing a week festival in a place called Lorient, which is in Brittany, which is a huge, huge um, folk festival, wow. and we're going to play that. And then we played that about oh, in 2016 was the last time we played it. And then we were invited a couple of times, but the pandemic got in the way, of course, since then. Um, so now that was great. And it was um, it was headlined by the chorus last time. So um, oh, wow. yeah, we got to play some really big stages, which was fantastic. And we get to, we've just played QPAC recently. Again, we've done that a few times. We just did that with Mahalia Barnes. Uh, Jimmy Barnes's daughter. She's a fantastic singer. I'd never met her before. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we did did a did a concert there, and we've got some more stuff coming up there. And yeah, anyway, so we do a little bit of that kind of stuff. Tell me the name of the Irish band, so everybody knows. And the name of the band, Irish band is called Sosta. Um, so it's an Irish word. It kind of means sort of content or happy, you know. So because we kind of play kind of kind of happy music, you know. Yeah. Uh, so Sosta. So it's spelled S A S T A. Think of pasta, but with an S. There you go. Yeah. Pasta. <laughs> and the band is, I mean, is everybody from the same area as you? Or how did you get them together? No, yeah, the, they all live, the, I live in the Sunshine Coast, and the other three guys in that band live in Brisbane. Um, and we're from all, my family are from the, um, from the Midlands of Ireland originally. Uh, one of the guys is, uh, who plays the accordion, Rocky. He's, um, he's from the west of Ireland. He's from uh, Mayo, which is next to Galway. Most people over here know Galway. And um, then we have Kevin, who plays all kinds of stuff. He plays the whistle and the flute, the Irish flute, and he plays the piano, and he also plays the Illan pipes, which is the Irish version of the bagpipes, like the small pipes. Um, he's from the north of Ireland, so we're going to go and play a gig up there as well. And then we've got Fred, our Fred, who's our fiddle player, amazing fiddle player. He's actually from Cairns. So wow. he's, he's the token Aussie in the band. Yeah. So uh, a brilliant Irish fiddle player. Um, so he is, uh, yeah, from Cairns. So we're actually going to come back when we do that tour and go and play a gig in 
Cairns, we're going to go and do a gig yeah. in Young, Younger Borough, I believe, Tablelands Folk Festival, it's called. So he gets to get a hometown gig as well. So that'll yeah. be fun. lovely. Lovely. Um, and what do you play? Mm. I play in that band. I play, um, I play the guitar and I'm a singer. And I use a stump box, you know, to keep the beat because we, we don't use a drummer very often. We do occasionally, but most of the time I just use a stump box. Um, we've got kind of an interesting setup. I have a, a guitar that's kind of a bit of a Frankenstein guitar. So it's set up. It's all Irish music in guitar is um, mainly played in a completely different tuning on the guitar. So it's in, it, yeah, it's, it's called Dadgad. So it's D-A-D-G-A-D. -A -D. So it's like this further drone, drop drone modal tuning. So um, I've got that. And then the just the just the bass string is connected to a bass pedal, which is, so I have drum and bass. So I have the left foot for bass and drum. And so you have, anyway, it's kind of contemporary Irish music. It's it's a little bit like, uh, I say like it's uh, it's not, um, it's more funky than uh, river dance music. It's not that, so it's got yeah. drum and bass with it as well, but then it's uh, it's not as rock and roll as uh, Dropkick Murphy's. <laughs> can, you, um, can you give me a link or something later so that, Sure, yeah, we're on, um, if you just look at um, Sasta Band, S-A-S-T-A -S Band, B-A-N-D, dot com, um, I think there's, uh, you'll, you'll kind of get an idea of of what we do, but now we, we've, we've played some fantastic gigs, and what's interesting about that band is um, because the genre of music is quite small, as in, it's it's Irish music, so, you know, it's, it's more of a niche kind of thing, you know, it's not like you know, people that like reggae music or rock music, for example, it's like, you know, 70% of, 80% of people probably, you know, people that are, like Irish music, there's that many people like it. Um, the great thing about that is once you get to kind of performance level at any sort of decent level, you tend to, we've kind of met nearly all of our, all the superstars, you know, all the people that we, you know, we, we you know, aspire to play like, you know, and yeah. emulate. Um, you get you get to meet these people really. Whereas if you're into rock music, the chances of you meeting you two are quite slim. If you're into Irish music, the chances of you meeting the best Irish musicians in the world are not are quite likely. You know, if you play festivals, you know. Yeah. Some of them stay at my house. No, Cool Britannia. Tell me about Cool Britannia. Britannia. Um, cool Britannia is a. Um, that was that's that's just gone from strength to strength. That's been great fun. Um, I just had a, a, it was my birthday on Saturday, just gone. So we had a, uh, we had a gig on, on the, on the Saturday night, which was fantastic. Um, it was a bit of a last minute thing. We were meant to play uh, the Malulaba Foreshore Festival. Uh, so there was going to be a, an opening up there, an outdoor festival, outdoor stage. And Cool Britannia were on at about five o'clock, I believe. And then there was another band on and then the Rude Boys, Sunny Coast Rude Boys were on at the end. So I was having a busy, busy day for my birthday. Um, but then, of course, the rains came and cancelled us. So um, a friend of ours uh, saw that we were, we were that the gig was cancelled and offered us a last minute gig at a venue up in Gympie. I've never played in Gympie before, so that we had an absolute fantastic night. So we went up there and played. So yeah, that's a '90s. Cool Britannia is like a. Uh, it, it's very self indulgent. It was my all of my favourite songs from the '90s. Um, growing up in London, um, so it was it's Oasis. Um, blur the verve uh, all the manchester stuff happy mondays all that kind of stuff so it's um you know in spiral carpets shed okay. seven radiohead all that kind of stuff yeah. so i've been so lucky um we were so lucky about 2009 end of 2019 um i just had this brainwave i thought oh, i'll give it a go just for a bit of fun to see who would, who would like to go so i i put um i put the word out on on just a musician's page on facebook on Brisbane to see who'd be interested and um a couple of the guys that uh, I got a load of response straight away what to form this band you mean this band yeah 19, okay and then um and then we and then it turned out the people that two of the people that that um two of the the other four uh, I knew already really well um, but I just didn't realize they had any connection to that music and they're like Mick I'll play that I'd love to play that so anyway I, uh, we, we got together, we played a uh, couple of rehearsals, we just said, like, we'll just have four songs, we'll meet up in three weeks and we'll do these four songs. And it sounded great from the get-go. Um, so we've just been so lucky. So we just had a, a couple of um, 
we've, we haven't had, apart from a, we've, we're, we've been through a few bass players and we've got a great guy in now. Um, and nice. that's all the bass players, just people that had, we had one guy that came at the start, he was a lovely fella and he just ended up being really busy with his, his other band that he was already in yes. and that got really busy. So he had to leave. And then we had um, James, a guy who was traveling over from Scotland to live in Australia. Um, so we kind of found him and he came in and he's an amazing musician and he, we had a great time with him. We still chat to him all the time. He ended up having to go back to Australia, uh, to Scotland. Um, and then we ended up, then would you believe I ended up with a guy playing the bass, Lee, who's an absolute cracking guy who lives on my road. Oh, <laughs> I would never knew him before. Um, so <laughs> teach, teach, he's a music he's a teacher at my daughter's school and uh, he lives literally, I could walk to his house um, and he's come into the band and he's been a breath of fresh air for all of it. So it's all been great, thankfully. And yeah. the other guys are just spectacular in the band. They're really good guys and they all love the music. And yeah, we've gone from- Like you're playing in, I don't know, is it sports stadiums or something? This Yeah, the, we've, we've got some great gigs. With, yeah, we've, we've got some great gigs with that band. Um, we have played, um, we sort of did the sort of pub circuit a little bit. We've ticketed all our gigs. We've gone gone down that route straight away. And then we have um, played the played the Triffid a couple of times, um, I suppose, because I had connections before of, of doing sort of some of the bigger venues with the Rude Boys and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of shoehorned the band in there and we've got in there. And when we, we've gone in there, it's actually turned out to be a really good night. So the venue's been really happy with it. Yeah. Uh, we've actually got a gig there in on in a couple of weeks on the 23rd of July and we've we sold yeah. over 600 tickets for that already which is fantastic um so that's gone really well it's a great sort of expat community in in Brisbane and, and around you know so and it's just the right kind of age group as well that would have well my age group really that would have listened yeah. to that, that go along my girlfriend is going to be crazy yeah so yeah so that's gone and then we got yeah we've got a lovely call so next sort of Saturday night coming on the 9th we're playing at the um at Suncorp Stadium for uh, England versus Australia rugby, the rugby union. So that'd be great fun. So I think the plan is to have uh, Aussie band, an Aussie rock band one side and the Cool Britannia the other side and they do a song to G up their fans and then we do a song to G up. <laughs> so yeah, it should be very, very grateful of it. Yeah, it should be great. Is that the first time you've done that kind of thing? Uh, no, no, we've done... Um, I've done some stuff with the Irish band before. We've done some pre-match entertainment and post-match entertainment at rugby. Yeah, we did it at 2011 in New Zealand for the um, oh for the God. World Cup, the Rugby World Cup for the Irish, yeah, for, with the Irish supporters and everything. So now it's all, all good fun. I've done we've done all kinds of crazy stuff before. Oh, <laughs> great. Yeah. Right. Tell me about the Rude Boys. The Rude Boys, yeah, the rude yeah, boys I mean, my beautiful, dysfunctional family. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how many? Where do you find how them all? How long have you been going on for? And oh. are you on the sunny coast? Or, you know. The Rude Boys has been going for, I believe, uh, I think all up, it must be quite a long time. It must be nine years now, I think. Um, so it started off quite small um again i i really i had a, a friend of mine and still have it who's still the bass player in the in the rude boys steve he's a good friend of mine a teacher he lives down the road here in in the sunshine coast um i was saying to him i'd love to um i've always loved that music because growing up in in london in that area um in the kind of 80s early 80s um i kind of had a big Irish family at home so I had all that kind of music at home there was an influence and then of course it was when I was at school it was Madness the specials UB for the specials there you go, there you go. Uh, Madness the specials um and all that kind of the beat you know all that kind of music was 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 great as well um when I was smaller probably my, my brother would really would have liked that and all that kind of mod era of Paul Weller and the jam and all that kind of stuff as well so I really like that music as well and um Sasta was going really well the Irish band and I was really enjoying gigging and and playing and and then I thought it'd just be really good fun to have a a real fun party ska band so yeah I got a few people together and a few people I knew um and yeah, it's been through a good few changes, the Rude Boys, over that. How many, 
How many are you? Uh, how many are we now? We are the kind of core band now is 10. There's a solid, not the full A team lineup is 10. Um, so we can go more, we can, you know, very occasionally there's one or two, you know, if I've got, like, I've got a five piece horn section. So I was going to ask if they were all horn, I mean, you know, mostly yeah, horn. Yeah, yeah, that's like, right. Yeah, it's, it's funny, you know, we, with uh, ska bands a lot of the time, you they're, they're big bands, but most of them are horn players, you know, you have your drummer, your keys, your bass, your singer, and, you know, um, and then you're, uh, and then you just generally have a load of horns playing as well. So, but I mean, we can we can bring in a few more horns, or we can certainly go out with three instead of five horns. You know, that's absolutely fine as well. We can still make yeah. a lot of fills, and it still sounds great. So yeah, that's fine. But nine nine times out of ten, there's 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 ten or eleven of us. You know. Yeah. Do you have so, to do a lot of arranging stuff like that, or does everybody kind of cover their bit and you know? arrangement within the songs you mean yeah yeah we yeah. Think so many you know how does that go yes and, yes and no um it's kind of a ah uh, it's some of the songs that we've recorded we tend to play um the ones that we've recorded we tend to play as per the recording really just so everyone knows where they are um a lot of the time with that music it's you know, we really are having as much fun as it looks like on the stage there. So when we're jumping around and everything, it's just, we're, we're all, I know it sounds very corny, but we all are great mates and we have such great fun. Um, everyone in that band has has played at a decent level before, so they're well able for it. Uh, they all know the songs, so we get to jam out on songs. And with ska music, you can, you know, especially with the sort of stuff we play, you can you know i like you know i have a bit of fun conducting it as the front man of that band so we can break songs down and just you know i've got people like um annie j our sax saxophone player who's you know conservatorium you know one of the top sax players in the country can cut you know if i break a song bit, a bit, aren't they? Exactly, yeah. and just let her do her thing and then i've got you know i've got phil uh, phil barnard who's who's you know plays plays a saxophone as well tenor sax he comes in and he's um you know he's played all literally all over the world with the porkers the you know the all nighters the he played with the boss tones in america you know he's played you know massive uh, gigs all over the world and all the other i could keep going on the guys of yeah. you know the the other him and the, the steve the trumpet player and wayne the trombone player have all played with and toured with bad manners as as the as the horn section for bad manners for years um every one of them's got a big a story you know sam is uh, the youngest guy in the band he's a trumpet player he's just absolutely fantastic he's been um he's been running off moonlighting with uh he's been picked up by playing but with the porkers and with tijuana cartel as well and he's he's going so great so everyone in that band's you know got yeah. history you know and they're all busy so um is it an organizational nightmare for so many people yes yeah. most bands are aren't they <laughs> yeah. we um to tell you i've got a funny story about that very uh, uh very very recently only last week um just between one thing and another we had a rehearsal i've got a studio at my house here and um just last week we had a rehearsal for all 10 people to come and we had uh, my good friend Angus, who plays the keys for the Rude Boys, is also a fantastic drummer. Um, he's also very clever with Pro Tools and recording and setting to end writing tunes. And he's great. He's got a great brain for all of that stuff. Great experience. So he'd written this riff. And so he sort of sent me this riff and I'd kind of worked some bits out what I wanted to do with it with my friend Steve. So we said, well, great, what we'll do is we'll meet on Thursday night, 10 of us at the studio. And uh, just between one thing and another, and it's not usually like this, you, sometimes you might have one that can't make it or something, or, or maybe two, five people couldn't make, we literally had 50% of the band <laughs> turned up. And there was like one person, you know, like a couple of people got caught up at work and they were just so fun, they couldn't do it. And then the rain, and the, so it was just a real crazy night. Anyway, it turned out fine, we recorded this, the, a demo track of this song sounds fantastic. We've got a new original Rude Boys song that we're going to be doing when we play with you uh, in October. 
Um, it sounds fantastic. We were really delighted with it. So we, we get by. So we recorded it all, send it, sent it to the other five, and they're like, I'm really sorry, couldn't make it. It was just it was just very funny because all of them happened, it all happened to fall on the same night. But yeah, yeah it's one of those things, yeah. If you have 10 people and that many moving parts, often um, you know, people can't make rehearsals and they're spread out. I mean, we've got I, mean, guys. I was just gonna say that it's so big and everybody's so far away from each other. Yeah. yeah, the furthest apart, I've got um, I've got one one of the band members up in Tawanton, past Noosa, and the other one way down um, at the Gold Coast, at Corumbin, down that area. So that's a couple of hours difference, you know. So that's just the way it goes. But no, we we, do, we go pretty well. I mean, for a yeah. band... You're you writing original music as well, hey? Not yeah, we write, we, we try and keep a lot going. I mean, a lot of our set is... I mean, if we do a one-hour set, we've probably got... We probably do three or four original songs. And then, I mean, a lot of people that want to come and see us, it's a little bit like the Cool Britannia thing. The reason they come to see us is they want to hear Madness. They want to hear the specials. They want to hear Bad Manners. We can play Bad Manners with the guys that are actually in the band, you know, that were in the Bad Manners band, you know, so um, with the touring band. So, you know, it, when people come to see us, they want to see, they want to hear the exact songs are very much like Roaring Lion. When they want to go there, they want to hear No Woman, No Cry. They want to hear Buffalo Soldier. You know, that's why they're there. Yeah. Did you and Glenn know each other before? What? Glenn from Roaring Lion? Yeah. No, 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 no. I um, I had seen you guys. Uh, I'd seen Roaring Lion uh, twice, I believe. I saw, I can't remember where the first one was. And then the second time I do remember, because I was with my daughter, I was at, I saw you guys at Night Quarter. When you played at the Night Quarter venue, I've played there a good few times now as well. Um, up in the Sunshine Coast there at Britannia. And yeah, I just thought it'd be a good mix with the whole ska reggae thing, because if you can cover the, the reggae, the Bob Marley sort of version, then we can, with, with the ska thing, um, you know, because that whole story of ska, ska was the 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 precursor to reggae. A lot of people don't realise that they think ska is, is yeah. yeah, they think it's new. They think it's madness and the specials. Well, that was a whole second generation of ska. So like Bob Marley was ska before he was reggae, right? So he was he played played you know that real early stuff, um, which came from sort of blues and mento, I suppose, from American records that they would have got in Jamaica and replicated them. Um, and then ska music came around and then out of ska music became became reggae, you know. Um, so, but I just thought with that night would be nice because if we can keep the, the Bob Marley stuff that people that are uh, familiar with and you guys do it so well, then we could cover with our set, we could cover a little bit of early, reg early Trojan kind of ska, first wave ska, and then do the two tone stuff that we do well. And then maybe throw in a little bit of the really modern stuff that we've, we've some of our original stuff yeah. is, would be almost classed as third wave yeah. stuff. You get exposed to new things, but still yeah. within the same family. It's lovely. It's just, Absolutely. It's just, yeah. And it's all fun. It's yeah. fun music. With a Rude Boys gig, I just think even... I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't um, wait. Uh, with a Rude Boys gig, we've, we've really built up a really solid following now. Um, and there's a lot of people there that are... Uh, you know the the a lot of expats that were are sort of my age and a bit older even that remember the specials and all that kind of stuff and that's why they're there because they're into the two tone. There's loads of people that had never heard of Scar and they just happened to come to a gig because they were brought to somebody and now they're can, now they're fans yeah, um, yeah, because yeah. it's just fun because it's fun music even if you're not really into it or you don't really know it because it's just such good fun music and the musicians are really good. I mean the horn players are fantastic and. Yes. You know, so there's no there's no argument with it. It's you can't really not like it, and it's a show as well. It's not just a, yes. a, a gig. It's a show. You know, we we're running around and messing about. Like, yeah, can't all, wait. See, all players run out into the audience and play out there and stand on tables and do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, great. Sounds like you have decades of music going. I mean, really, all your life. Hey. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah. It's not what I've always done, but it's. Uh, I've always, I've always loved, um, I've always loved music. Um, I've always loved playing music, and I, I really kind of only got into music, playing music properly when I moved to Australia, kind of fifteen years ago. Yeah, that was my um, next question coming up. Okay. Yeah, I kind of, I've, I've always played music, and I, you know, I played. I lived in Ireland for a good few years before I moved here. I, moved, I lived in Dublin, and um, so it's played, like London, Ireland, Dublin, and then here. Yeah, 
So um, yeah, no, I was uh, I I, uh, I used to play um, a lot of Irish music in Ireland when I lived there, um, a lot, and really got into that because that's like a really set a real niche skill to play that music, you know. Um, and then so I did all that, and then yeah, but the other stuff I really only got into it when I came over here and you know, really loved it and just went for it really. Yeah, and the singing from when you were young also. Oh, the singing. Oh, I just make that up. I don't know if I'm any good at that. I just try my best. <laughs> Look, from an Irish family, it's, you know, that's what we do. You know, we, we Irish people yeah. tend to, when they get together, there's going to be a song, you know. It's, a you know, a lot of the, I suppose, the Maori culture is a little bit like that as well. There's going to be guitars yeah, and right. they are. That from that culture. <laughs> yeah, they tend to do that. Um, that's just our thing. And I think it, most, if you speak to most Irish people or people from an Irish background, you know, most of them will be able to hold the tune or sing a song or because they were just part of our culture, really. So, yeah, I never really had a, a you know, an issue with that. So I always sort of sang a little bit and then, yeah, sort of got into it. Yeah. So in a few weeks, you're on a plane. Is that right? A few weeks, we're on a plane. Yeah, we've got a few more gigs between now and then. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's so busy. So you've got... Yeah, you can <laughs> Oh, you don't want to see my diary. I've got rehearsals before all of that as well. I'm, I'm out <laughs> nearly every night of the week. <coughs> yeah, so we do, um, yeah. we'll be rehearsing in the week, um, of course, because we've got massive gigs in. The gigs in France are huge. They kind of like the last gigs we were doing in France were kind of in front of five, six, seven, eight thousand people. Um, so last time we were there. Um, so we have to be right uh, when we go there. I mean, we, we've got some, it's a very well rehearsed band. We've just recorded a, um, an album called uh, Airlocked. Um, we recorded that at uh, Ian Hogg's from Ian Hogg from uh, Powderfinger. We just recorded at his studio in, in yeah. Brisbane, um, which was a fantastic experience. So we just released that album. So that's mainly what we're going to be playing when we go to France. Um, and then we've got some kind of pumpy, it's very pumping kind of danceable Irish music. It's mainly instrumental that we play. Um, so yeah, it's it's all it's all been really good. So I'm really looking forward to that. So we'll be on a plane in start of August until the end of August. So yeah. Mm. All right. And then and, and coming back from Ireland and then to Cairns in August. And then come back to Cairns. No, we, we come back from Ireland at the end of August. Uh, so then we've got lots then we've got september i've got the scar festivals and then october we've got the gig with you and then the night before the gig with roaring lion we're in um cool britannia in night quarter and then i can't remember now off the top of my, like this weekend is busy i've got an irish wedding on friday night uh saturday night i am somewhere else where are we saturday night forgotten and Sunday we are in, oh no, Saturday night we're at Suncorp Stadium <laughs> with Cool Britannia. And then Sunday we are, we're in Ipswich, the Spark Festival with Sasta as well, doing the world music thing with Sasta on Sunday as well. So yeah, that, that's just a busy weekend. And that's so I've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday rehearsals and then Irish Wedding Friday, Suncorp Saturday, and then the festival on Sunday. That's my weekend. Busy, busy. Very busy. I can't believe you haven't talked to me. So no, it's cool. Do you know what? It's not as it, it sounds busier than it is. It's not actually that. It sounds crazy just because you kind of go around a little bit, but it's not really. If you think about it, I'm just going to work the same as everybody else. Really, I just go on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Really, you know, and then I do some rehearsal in the week, and some of the rehearsals happen at my studio in my house, so I don't have to go too far for that one. You know, not all of them, but half of them happen there. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's great. All right. So I'll make sure um, I put all the links to, to all your bands. And oh, you're very kind. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you very much. I'm also, also learning a bit, a bit really about, you know, promotion and stuff like that and, and how you're doing things. It's great. Hey. Yeah, I'm trying. Do you do it? Do you do that? I, I do that. Yeah, I do it all. all you know, well, I kind of, yeah, I kind of did it all on my own, really. I, not, I don't sort of mean that as you're sort of saying I've done a great job. I, I, I just... I've learned as I've gone along and I suppose in music, you know, you, you have to kind of be a bit of, have a bit of shameless self-promotion really. So I, I kind of, I learned a little bit with Sasta, just trying to push that band when it started and that went really well. And then you sort of see what works and what doesn't. And then I had a bit more experience when I started the Rude Boys. So that happened. And then I saw an opportunity with other bands that were, that we could 
partner up and make a big day. And my idea was with the Scar Festival was a little bit like Notting Hill Carnival. That was my idea to have yeah. a couple of bands on, have the dancers, the samba dancers and the girls with the feathers and all that's all good fun. All, and the drummers and the steel drum bands, the, you know, to, to have that kind of vibe to it. So that's what we'll have. Um, you know, there'll be a steel drum band there. Yeah. There'll be drummers there, um, the, the the dancers will be there, and we'll have um Roaring Lion playing the, the legend album that we're gonna have the Rude Boys having a so it'd just be a big party. So when that happened, I started well, basically what I started is is I couldn't really afford when I first started to pay somebody to do artwork and posters and everything. Yeah. So I started to learn how to do it myself. Um, and I've just, I mean. I'm still not, I'm not a master at it at all, but I've, you know, I've, I've got this far, I suppose. So it's gone. Okay. So you just learn a bit as you go along. Um, I didn't have any experience whatsoever in that to start with. I just sort of just, just tried, kept trying and see if I got a little bit better, like everything like music, you keep doing it, you get a bit better, don't you? Yeah, so yeah. by the time Cool Britannia came around, I kind of had a good, uh, a good idea of what works and what doesn't now. And it's interesting to see what works and what doesn't, you know, some of the, the way everything keeps changing with Facebook and Instagram and who to target. Yeah. When. Yeah. Our younger members are taking care of the Insta account and stuff like that, I have to say. So it's sort of oh, it's, it's great. Yeah. I mean, I, I, unfortunately, I mean, I've got sort of, well, I suppose I'll bore you with, but I mean, I've got the three bands, but I've also got then the Queensland Sky and Reggae Festival. I've also got an Irish show, the Heart of Ireland, heartofireland.com.au as well. Okay. So that's like a, a river dance type show um, that we do as well. Um, so what there's. Do you mean? What do you mean, like? Uh... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we stumbled on something. Else. So right on the back of the Rude Boys, we've created the sort of what I call the festival. It is a festival, I suppose. It's just one day, but it's you know it's not a full day camping festival or anything. But it's a one day celebration, I suppose. So that's the more broad term of the word festival. Um, on the back of the Irish band, we've created um, a show, uh, a sit down show that we've done at Calandra Events Centre. We've done it at QPAC. We've done it at uh, Twin Towns. We've done it at Nightquarter, which yeah. is six world champion Irish dancers. Um, my live band, four piece live band behind them, uh, everything choreographed a little bit like the whole river dance thing that happened. Um, we have an, uh, an Irish storyteller that comes out and MCs and tells jokes and tells folk stories. Um, so it's very much for that first and maybe probably more second generation, like the Irish Australians, you know, that kind of thing that have that. Yeah, yeah. So we have a show called uh, Heart of Ireland as well. So we're, we're looking at doing that. So we've run that for the last oh, five or six, six years now. Um, so we're just doing a big revamp in that. I'm, I'm having a meeting in, in Brisbane next week to to maybe revamp that show. And you've got to keep things changing a little bit, you know. Right. Keep it fresh and do all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but yeah the whole marketing thing's in, interesting because for that show, for example, my target market is people that are probably, I was going to say over 50. I mean, I was 48 the other day. It's probably people that are six, probably 60 and older, really, that are interested in that show they're not interested in instagram so right. i mean so so that that's a completely different marketing it, marketing to those people that demographic is completely different to marketing to you know even, even any of the bands that i mean i mean we do the whole instagram thing um but there's not most of people in my generation not i wouldn't say most but certainly not all of them are on instagram most of them are facebook yeah. people and it, it, there's so much to learn you know so yeah. much to learn about that stuff and I, I'm far from knowing all of it as well. yeah and it keeps changing and it's difficult because you know you, you just you know with even with I had a, 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 a chat with a friend of mine who's um who's you know quite a, a well-known musician uh, in the in Australia a little while ago and he was talking about promotions with with his band who were quite a big band and he, he was even talking about we were talking about posters and whether it's worth doing posters anymore you know yeah. when and you see them all up even now back in the day it was a huge thing because that's how you got the word out that gigs were happening where yeah. now you just think well if you're going to spend a few hundred dollars on posters and getting them printed and put up all over the place I and then it rains one day and then they're all gone or people take them down or whatever 
or do you spend that few hundred dollars on advertising on Instagram and Facebook where it pops up on people's phones every day for a month? And, you know, and you're targeting the exact people or you hope you are. Um, this, that's probably a better, possibly a better place to put your, your advertising budget it's now. A lot of thinking, isn't it? I think we're going to have to do a little bit of post. Uh, I see other members putting posters in. Yeah, certain places you eat, certain community places, you know. And sometimes they work great. Where you think your catchment audience is going to be. You know, it's hard. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just hard to know, really. And there's so many people doing the same thing and it's so hard to cut through the noise, you know. I think that the trick is I, I've found, well, not a trick, it's... You know, I think the, the the few rules that I've I've tried to live by with music is one, don't don't do it for the money. If you're in it just for the money, you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna get very far. You've got to love doing it and do it for other reasons. Um, you've got to, I think you've got to really try and connect with the people, um, which is easy certainly for me personally because I love doing it. Is connect with yeah. the people that come to see you and actually know it. I think years ago. I suppose certainly when I was younger, the sort of bands that were people really liked or that were becoming famous or something, there was almost this, you know, they always just they developed this mystique where you couldn't know them or you couldn't, they were kind of untouchable. And I think it's gone completely opposite now. Whereas yeah. people in the audience to, to really build a fan base, you have to know a lot of these people and go out and talk to them and talk to them before the gig and talk to them after the gig and you know really get that connection which is great because then it makes the gig more fun for me anyway knowing that you know you've got these loyal supporters out there that are really into it and everything and they want to chat to you and you want to chat to them and you know I've just started this whole thing with um all three of the band websites where we're doing <clears throat> a blog now where it's more personal stuff like we're doing little clips of our rehearsals where we mess things up and play a bum note and we have to yeah. start the song again and do all that because people can see the polished finished professional video or the professional photographs or any or, or, and all that kind of stuff but really what they you know a lot of I think I would as well if you want to see you want to see the actual people having a chat in the car on the way to the gig and all that kind of stuff you know yeah, so, yeah it, you it makes you really you know real yeah well it is yeah. and it is real it's a, you know it's it's like a lot of things and you, you know when you play these you know I've been lucky enough to play some well for me anyway quite big gigs um but it's not as you like, like you know yourself. It's not as glamorous as people think. It is. No, what do I mean? you know, like, like most jobs, thing. that's right. Like most jobs, it's not as glamorous as you think it is. And the easy bit is actually getting up, playing the music. The uh, you know they don't see the weeks of rehearsal, the you know not getting it right, and then it suddenly click in one night, and then having to you know get through it, and then drive for a few hours to get there, and then you've got a sound check at maybe four o'clock in the day. You're not playing till nine o'clock at night, and you left your house at two o'clock in the afternoon and you know all of that you got then your energy has got to be up there for you know especially some well with all the bands are playing but you know rude boys is a perfect example that band comes out with an absolute bang when it comes on well if we come on at 10 o'clock at night we could have been there from three o'clock in the afternoon just hanging around yeah. seven hours like you know that's yeah. a long time you know <laughs> yeah so you don't you really you love it Oh, you love it. You've got to. That's what I mean. You can't do it for the money. You've got to love doing it. You've got to be involved with the people uh, that are following you and, uh, yeah, be involved with the people that are supporting you, supporting your band and, and are fans of the band. Um, and, you've yeah, you've just got to, yeah, but you just, just always have something on the go as well. And the other thing, of course, the other way is is keeping all the, the band members interested as well. You know, they you've... They're you know, gonna yeah, help them grow. They give them opportunities to grow. I see that in line a lot. They they really encourage everybody to grow and push themselves and learn something. New. All those things, you know, it's for very sure. Nice. And they've all got to have something um, to. There's always got to be something in the pipeline to keep everyone excited and interesting. Because yeah. You play the same venue every time. Inevitably, if you have ten people in a band or eight people in a band or four or five each one of those people has got a slightly different motivation of being there and they've got a different level of motivation and one thing will make one or two of them click and it won't make the other two or three click or the other five or six whereas yeah. you've got to find out what really makes people yeah. tick 
and you've got to give it to them you know if they want to go on tour that's one thing you know you've got things lined up or if you want if you've got some big gigs or you've got some gigs in a certain area or you're going to do a charity thing that would really you know tick boxes for some of the guys or whatever it's going to be so yeah, yeah it's, it's I do hard. see that I see that in lots I mean this is it's all new for me every single bit is new you know being a roaring line being in a big band all of that stuff is all very new and um like so first of all there's all these new songs for me to to know about and then um and then they still want to bring on more new songs you know and then uh my my initial reaction is always why do we even need new songs you know I, and then and then those new songs become my favorite songs you know and then they want to do like a very vocal set you know, and bring the instruments down. That's what's happening in our um, North Lakes gigs in a couple of weeks. And I'm thinking, oh, why do they want to do that? But then it is, it's keeping things fresh, changing things, learning different strengths. Yeah. The whole process is just, um, it's amazing. It's amazing. That's so great. Very privileged, you know. I mean, I can do quite a lot of things on an instrument, but I don't have vision like that. That's the, the different people who are leading this band really um they're thinking up all these things, you know, they're... Uh, yeah, you've got, <laughs> you've got to, if you, if you do these shows, you know, you've got to have different songs and because if people have come to see you a few times, although they want to see this, it's, it's so hard to, to do these things because people, though they want the same songs, they don't want to see the same thing over and over again. It's like, you know, it's like going to see a comedian and them saying, you know, the same, yeah. the same jokes, right? Yeah. So although they want, you know, with your band, they'll want to hear the massive hits off that off that um legend album which is what most people will know um there still has to be um certain things that will um that will interest and will spark interest or something that's different and it only has to be one little thing you know there's got to be little tricks that you put you just pepper amongst the show like a couple at the start one in the middle a couple at the end like a couple of little things and then next time you play there and it's the same people you still need to do the tricks but they have to be they don't want to see the same trick again so they want to see the music yeah. time but they've got to see another little maybe a little harmony thing where you break that down or you know yeah. if you're depending on the audience as well you know we i'm doing the same thing with cool britannia as well we've got a couple of um because we've got the opportunity with this uh, big show that we're doing we're going to have well if if we can get another probably 90 tickets sold between now and the 23rd of July, we're probably going to sell out the Triffid, which is going to be a massive achievement for us. But because we've got all of those people there, it's a perfect opportunity to get a sing song going. Like if we can get a really well known song um, and we can, we've rehearsed these songs where we just stop and just get the audience to sing because there's that, that connection is phenomenal. And I've, I've seen videos of your band do it as well. When people just when the audience sing back at you right. and you're I mean, together, it's yeah, it's it's amazing. Like the all that love coming back to you, it's like fantastic. Yeah. I mean, what a, what a way to spend a Saturday night, you know? It's just a, it's just a fantastic way to to the the feeling that you get as a musician, and and as importantly or more importantly that the the, uh, the people that have come to, you know, that have got a babysitter for the night or done whatever they need to do and made the effort to come out and buy a ticket and do it and to be. They need to be engaged. They need to be part of it, you know. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, to keep that going all the time is uh, it's 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 a it's hard, man. But you've got to, you know you've got to think about these things. You've got to think who your who your demographic are, who who exactly they are, the thing that they'll know. Um, I went to see Catch a Fire a little while ago um, yeah. with some friends, and they did a fantastic job as well. Um, and um, my one of, I mean, they're a great band, um, but one of my favorite parts of the evening was nothing to do with them really. When they left the stage after their encore, because they had that um, kind of Maori following, they, the whole crowd just started singing this song, which I didn't know, not being from there, which was yeah. just, oh, it made my, yeah. my the back of my neck and then they sang this it must have been a song from school or something that they all knew or something yeah. or whatever it was that's happened that with lines too in that language yeah and it's just mm -hmm. so beautiful they did a haka 
Yeah, yeah. And then and then they sang a song, and that's all you know, very new for me. But it's just so moving. I just, oh, exactly, exactly. Wow. And it happens in Ireland all the time. That stuff, you know, you get a, you know, there's that culture where people sing a song, or people in the on a normal night out, especially in more more in the country than the city, uh, admittedly, but. If if you'll um, you know you'll get a sing song and people someone will sing a song and then the whole literally the whole pub will join in the the song you know and it's and then they'll just finish the song and everyone will just carry on talking you know carrying a conversation but it's it's a beautiful cultural thing to do you know the 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 connection you get with people when you do that is phenomenal and the atmosphere it can it, it creates. Oh, I feel so lucky. <laughs> we are lucky. We're privileged to get to do this. We're privileged to get on the stage, and I think if we. You know, we always remember that as well. You know, it's it, it, to get up there and do what we get to do is 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 great. And you know, we we often say when we we chatting and when we're on the road and everything, we so it's really important to acknowledge that and to to know that yourself that we are really lucky to do it. And every gig that you play, not 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 everybody knows when it's their last gig. You know, when you play your last gig in your life, you never know. It doesn't mean just because you're older or what. It can loads of reasons happen why people never play a gig again. And they probably never realised that gig they played on Saturday night was their last gig. So my my point of view is every gig I go out to play, <laughs> it's like my last one. You're just 110%, you know. Beautiful. Yeah. Wow. It's been great. It's been lovely talking to you. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, for thank you. Lovely. This will be the first time I'm putting out a podcast like this, but I don't think I want to touch anything here. I'm oh, like, okay. <laughs> um, it's lovely. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was lovely talking to you, Jenna. Thank All you very right. much. I'm and I look forward to see you soon. Yes. If I don't see you before, I'll see you in October. All right. Great thing. Thank you very much. Thank Make you. Use. Use. <laughs> That's all right. See Bye. you. Bye-bye.